<laughs> I was trying to do something cool, like a cool intro. Uh, the only problem is I'm not cool at all. But I am excited because I'm here in Page, Arizona, and I'm excited because I have new camera gear. I have new tripods. I have two new tripods. I mentioned a little while ago that Three Legged Thing had, was releasing a bunch of new tripods and other gear and that I would soon get some of that. Well, the moment has arrived, and on today's episode, both here in the room and out in the field here in Arizona, I'm gonna test and review some of these new products, the new tripods, and I'm stoked. So, let's get into it really quickly. The two tripods are Winston 2.0 and J. J is from the Legend series, which is the brand new series of tripods by Three Legged Thing. And Jay's awesome. I've been using both of these tripods the past couple of days, just testing them in the field. And I really, really, really like J. J is a leveling base travel tripod. As far as I know, it's the only one in the world. And I think it's probably the smallest leveling base tripod in the world, period. And if you don't know what a leveling base is, we're gonna go out in the field right now and test it. And by right now, I mean this morning we went out in the field to photograph Lone Rock and out in the field I talked about what the leveling base does. So let's jump to the past. Okay, we're out here at Lone Rock and I'm with my buddy Jay. Jay is a leveling travel tripod. And as far as I know, it's the only one of its kind, you know, a travel tripod that has a leveling base. And the reason for a leveling base is just for easier panos. If you set up on even ground and you get your camera level and you pano, everything will be level. But if your tripod's on uneven ground and you pan your head, it's gonna dip or dive one direction or another, or it's just gonna be a battle. With a leveling head, it doesn't matter if your feet are even, you have this bit down here and you just manipulate this part to be flat. Once this is flat, it doesn't matter if your feet are uneven, it doesn't matter if you're tilting up or down, as you swivel the head like this, it's gonna stay straight on the horizon. It's gonna stay level on the horizon. So leveling bases are great for people that love doing panos. It's exactly what I'm doing this morning at Lone Rock. The sky's a little bit boring over the rock. So I'm just zoomed in at like 135 millimeters or 100 millimeters or something like that. And I'm just taking a small cross section of this scene. Setting the camera up on the brightest part of the scene, just off to the right. Manual focus, manual aperture, manual shutter speed, manual white balance, and then just taking seven to nine photos across the horizon vertically. And then we'll stitch them together into a panel. And hopefully when the sun comes up, some of this will catch some light and we'll get a nice image. From hello, what's your name? I'll know I'll never be the same oh, You've been changing me From trying so hard not to play the fool To do you know that you're beautiful oh, You've been changing me Just take some time But little by little, yeah, we'll get it right What's dirtier, the Jeep or, or the Forerunner? <laughs> oh, that's a good idea. I think it's gonna have to be the Forerunner. No. No way. No, I think the Jeep. I think the Jeep's dirtier. The Jeep's way dirtier. I somehow got dirt on the roof. <laughs> we, we think. As you can see, we didn't get a whole lot of light this morning. It was probably the right situation for a pano. And uh, Jay definitely did the trick out there. As you can see, Jay has a, a video head on top. And out in the field, you would have seen that I didn't have the video head on. When you buy Jay, you have the option of buying just the sticks or the kit. The kit comes with a video head. The video heads are brand new by Three Legged Thing. And I've been messing around with it a little bit. Up at Alstrom Point, I used it. And I have to say, I really like it. It's really sturdy, and for video, it's really nice to have. I think there's also probably a couple uses in landscape photography for it as well, but for the most part, it's just for video or maybe wildlife photography. At some point in the future, if I'm doing wildlife photography on a tripod, I'll probably use it. So it's gonna stay in my bag. But for the most part, 
It's going to be twisted off and I'll put the other head on top of it. You can put any head on top of this leveling base and then the way the leveling base works is you've just got a, a knob down here. You just loosen it and then the leveling base, I didn't turn the knob off far enough, and then the leveling base just slips and slides around on the top and you just go until the leveling bubble is level like it is now and then you're good to go. Now, the, the reason I went with J, the reason I picked J was because of the size. I wanted a really, really small, sturdy tripod that I could take hiking with me. Or if I had like a conference to go to and I was based in my base in Portugal and I didn't want to take, you know, a massive tripod, but I still wanted a tripod just in case I was going to take pictures, I can stick this in carry on. It's small enough to fit in carry on. So that was the main reason I went with Jay. Jay's maximum height is about 1.1 meters, a little bit more than that, I think. It's got four twisty joints to pull out into legs, which is the reason it packs up so small. There is another version of the Legend series that's bigger. I believe it has just three joints, like this, one, two, kind of like Winston, and it goes to a height even higher than Winston without the center column. I think it goes to like 1.5 something meters. It's called Mike. And to be honest, I might want to get my hands on Mike in the future. I want to talk about a couple of the features of the Legend series that I quite like, or a couple of the innovations beyond the leveling base. And the first is this. So normally when you have your legs, they go out to this distance, but on most tripods, there's a way for you to open it up and then widen the legs for a little bit more stability. On some of those tripods, it's a little bit of a pain to move them. This one has kind of like a trigger. So you just push this button and it pops out and then they snap back into place as you go down. So a really nice feature. The other feature that they've also included on the 2.0 series of the Pro Series is, that, is this. So on most tripods these days, you can take one of the legs off and use it as a monopod. So you can put your head on the top of that and use it as a monopod. What they've done here is they've actually made it possible for you to remove every single one of the legs. And the reason they've done this isn't because they want you to be able to take off all three legs and then give two legs to a friend to use as monopods and you can go out and have three monopod, you know what I mean? The reason they've done it is because you can buy these like feet or stilettos for the bottom of the tripod that screw into the bottom of this and this turns into all of a sudden a tabletop tripod that's super sturdy. It's just another way of being versatile. And one of the reasons I love the three-legged thing gear is because they are super versatile and they're always innovating and trying new things. That's something that I think is really clever. The other tripod is Winston 2.0. And as you guys might know, I've had Winston, um, the original Winston forever, since it came out essentially. And I love Winston. Winston's an absolute beast. It's sturdy, it's strong, it's a little bit massive but I quite like that because I'd rather have a sturdy tripod rather than a tiny tripod in most situations, especially photographing places like Patagonia where the winds are really kicking up or Iceland or stuff like that. You need sturdiness, you need stability. Now, before I talk about the tripod and how they've changed it, we're going out this afternoon to White Pocket and I'm just gonna bring Winston. So uh, let's head in the field and take some pictures with this thing. So we're back at White Pocket where we were yesterday. I've got Winston set up. This is Winston set up on its like normal height. It's pretty close to perfect for me. I'm six feet tall and if I'm standing next to it, the eyepiece is just a little bit low. So it's a little bit of a photographer for photographer's pose to get down to it, but it's pretty comfortable. It's not too high, it's not too low. The beauty of it, I guess, is the versatility. I'm not much of a center column guy. I'll probably end up just taking out the center column because without a center column, you can basically get down to flat on the ground. Or if you want to do it with the center column, you can always flip the center column upside down and shoot upside down so you can get close to the ground as well. Or if you want, and you have a reason for it, like you need to get over something, you can get to about that high. It's about six and a half feet to eye level, maybe more. And uh, that's pretty sweet. 
I never do that or rarely do that, but it's an option if you want. Like I said, I'll probably end up taking the center column out. Now, I'm not gonna say much more about the three-legged thing, Winston 2.0 in the field, since I've been using a Winston for ages, but I am gonna show you some B-roll clips of White Pocket and some photos I've taken this afternoon here um, with Winston and my camera, obviously, and then we'll go back to the lab and talk more about the tripod. We're back from White Pocket. I have no idea if I got any photos because that's the future and I can't read the future. But let's talk about the changes to the tripod really quick. Winston 2.0 has a couple adjustments. It's not a whole lot of difference, but a couple adjustments. The joints down here are different. You can see the pads. There used to be a pad on every single one of these spots. Now they've reduced that in half, and that's just to lighten the tripod in general. The whole tripod is lighter than the last version. They've also changed the locking mechanisms down here to be a little bit more sleek and smooth. They're great. I find them better than the old ones. And then they've done the thing where you can take off every single one of the legs as well, which is awesome. The head's also slightly different. It's a little bit sleeker, a little bit cooler. And again, I think it's a little bit lighter. Yeah, overall, it's the same Winston I've loved forever. It, uh, yeah, it looks better. It's a sexy, sexy tripod. As I always say, don't buy camera gear because of aesthetics but it doesn't hurt when they're sexy as well. So that's Winston, that's Jay. Um, both are awesome products. I will say though, I like the Legend series so much that I think at some point in the future, you might find me with a mic because Mike's the bigger version of Jay. It's like Winston sized, but has all those features of the Legend series. I think I'm in love with it. I tested it back at the three-legged thing, um, chicken shed before they even launched the stuff and I love it. So don't be surprised if you see me switching up one of these tripods for Mike as well. Not because these aren't awesome, just because I think Mike is extra special. I have to give you guys the disclaimer as usual. As you guys know on this channel, I will always tell you if something is paid or free. I am on the three-legged thing pro team, which is why these tripods have this really cool uh, sticker that says three-legged thing Brendan pro team. And what that means is I just get the new gear when it comes out. I am not paid in any way, shape, or form by three-legged thing, but they do send me the new gear for free. I don't pay for that. That's the disclaimer from this video. I'm stoked to have new gear to play with. I always love having new gear, especially when it's high quality. Uh, there's lots more fun coming up from here in Arizona. I think uh, we're probably heading to Antelope Canyon and some classics. So it should be fun, and I'll see you later. Peace.